All right, well, welcome back to another episode, everybody. Um, we are continuing our travels on the Gibb River Road. Um, where we left you last week was where we meet you again this week, uh, which is at the uh, lookout where we camped overnight. Um, we enjoyed a lovely night here. Mm, it was really peaceful. No one else here. Um, beautiful night, beautiful lookout. Um, stars were epic as well, so it was really cool. Yeah. We uh, met a couple of people late yesterday afternoon uh, that came past the lookout and they informed us that the Gibb River Road does get worse and it gets worse on a hill climb up towards Mount Barnett Roadhouse. So um, we're probably going to get there this episode. We're going to see how we go, mm -hmm. but what's up first? Adcock, I think. Adcock Gorge, yeah. So we are just going to pack up here, get on the road, and we will see you at Adcock. Ready? Let's go. Afro, Afro, whoa. All right, so we're just coming into Adcock, um, just on the road, and it is a muddy mess, and the chicken track around it has got a big ditch that we don't think we're gonna get the van into. So we're gonna drop the van here, in this spot. Um, we can see that it's um, it should be okay. Um, it's pretty flat. All right, I'll let me know. And I'll just wrap Josh in. Yep, come on up back, you're good. Swing it in there now. So this is the boggy hole that we couldn't get through because it's just a mud mess. Um, you get stuck, especially we're quite heavy as well. So we're going to go up this track, but we couldn't get the van up because of this big ditch here. Um, and you can see here people have dragged their tow balls and stuff along here so we, we didn't want to be one of those people so well that's quite easy without a van <laughs> Matt we wouldn't be doing that with a van all right, let's keep going, eh? Definitely, definitely drop your caravan or trailer or whatever you're towing before you come past that point. It's about probably two k's down the uh, road to Adcock. All right, so we've uh, just arrived here at Adcock Gorge and we're about to do um, a walk. And I thought we might as well talk about um, footwear that we've found really good for places like the Gibb so far, but also um, even like Karajini and any sort of um, rocky sort of waterfall walks. So um, a lot of people we've seen wearing just normal runners and then they're always um, taking their, their shoes off and socks off and everything when they go to walk through the water and then they're drying their feet out the other side and then putting everything back on to continue the walk. You can do that, but half the problem is is that where you're walking in the water, it's quite rocky and it's not just about the rocks but there's also a lot of like moss and stuff on the rocks so it's very very slippery so a lot of people go for sixes and out here you're you know quite remote and a long way from help so you really don't want to be breaking any bones so but the thing we've found really good is like a good pair of like what people might call like reef shoes or aqua shoes normally we've spent about 20 bucks on a pair of shoes so they're pretty they're pretty cheap these ones we spent i think about 35 and these are more of like a um a low profile actual like dive boot so it's actual wetsuit material and on the bottom it's a super grippy you know flexible sole 
and they're great these have actually performed so well a lot of our other cheaper shoes at like 15 20 bucks have fallen apart within you know two or three hikes where these so far we've done handrail and wino gorge at Karagini. we did a walk around fortescue falls at Karagini, which we didn't put on the channel we've done the walk at to hancock gorge and kermit pool at Karagini. we've done bell gorge and now we're about to do these and these shoes honestly are performing fine so far so we'll let you know if if they start to sort of fall apart but so far you know these are great we just um, slip these on before we go for a walk and then uh, when we come back we take them off put them in like a plastic bag because they'll be wet and then when we get back to camp we just sit them out in the sun and let them dry and yeah good to go all right we'll whip these on and we'll get down to uh look at Adcock Gorge. So we can always hear the, already hear the water. So I think it's gonna be beautiful. We are the only people here this morning. And the time, Jackie, is? 28. 7.40 a.m. So if you get down here nice and early, um, you'll be able to enjoy it by yourself. We are also in the peak time of school holidays. So I'm surprised there isn't anybody here, to be honest, but anyway, lucky for us and let's go. Almost towards the end of the Adcock Gorge Walk and well let's just say we have arrived. Check this out. Water's a bit cold for old Jacko today for an early morning swim. So you're gonna be stuck with me. But at least you've got a waterfall and a nice gorge to look at, right? That's cool. Look at that tree. Growing out of the rock. Galvin's Gorge. Yeah. It's really nice. It, literally, the road is just there. Just there. And the walk is just here. Um, so you literally just park and walk.
This is a, a very, very nice walk. So sort of just walking through all these little shaded gullies and um, just walking along all this sort of stuff. Look how good. Just like fish and everything in the bottom. So clear. We have arrived at Galvin's Gorge. This is actually really beautiful. Well, if you, we were just saying off camera, this is pretty stereotypical Kimberley. I'll have a tree up the top of the fall, red rock, fern, tree, and a rope swing. You know, everyone's just enjoying themselves. So good. Lovely. Uh, but it's a bit of a challenge to try and get the thing. <laughs> Oh, it's great. So much fun. So good. Well, we'll enjoy this. <laughs> In no rush to leave. And, uh, yeah. We'll uh, chuff off, get some fuel at Mount Barnett, and pay our camping fees to go into the Manning Campground. And probably on the cards for tomorrow, we'll be doing the Manning Gorge Walk. And getting a big fat sausage roll <laughs> from Mount Barnett because apparently they're so good. All right, well, we're gonna enjoy this and we'll see you when we are at Mount Barnett. Have fun! So, we've just been into the Mount Barnett Roadhouse. We've got fuel and we've paid for two nights at the campground, and you get given one of these slips of paper. Um, the Manning Gorge campsite is just just behind the back of the petrol station um, so super easy to get to pretty much you dump all your rubbish here you can get water refill here that's all good so we're just going to go straight in Josh is just ditching the rubbish um, yeah. yeah so we're just ditching all our stuff um, I just went into the van before and noticed that we have no power to anything so Josh is just going to give that a quick suss out um, and see what's going on there. And we'll keep you posted on that. Cool. All right, so we haven't um, filmed too much because we've been running around trying to sort out the, or fault find, find out what's happening. Um, we have no power in our caravan. Um, we did have power for a stint once we've got down to Manning Gorge. Um, we had nothing at Mount Barnett. And um, <coughs> we picked up one of these new iTech 120X Pro batteries from iTech World, paid the full retail price for it. Um, and this is our first trip using it. And unfortunately, if you have a look at the voltage here, is it's just jumping around all over the place so the uh, BMS inside is just doing weird stuff um, half the time it's been at half a volt um, I've tried to jump start it um, just in case it was flat and our caravan was not charging it even though the caravan reckoned it was a hundred percent which I thought was a long shot anyway because 
the um, we're getting plenty of solar in every day we're getting like 10 12 amps using 20 percent 30 percent of the battery and then it was showing that it was recharging during the day so um, I reckon the battery has just cooked itself so it's pretty disappointing being a new battery but we are lucky in the fact that um, in the Land Cruiser we have one starter battery and I run two AGMs um, one under the bonnet and one in the back of the car um, in parallel together for our fridges so I'm just going to pinch one of those and slot it in here we'll probably head up to Mount Barnett because Jackie noticed that we she had some reception um, we got nothing down here at Manning and I might make a call to iTech world and see what they can do seeing that it's about two o'clock on a, on a Monday afternoon so anyway we got to get this um we got to get these batteries swapped over and I gotta isolate all my battery lugs and everything in the back of the car so that we can um, get this caravan back on and fridges back on and all that sort of stuff. Otherwise we're gonna lose all our food. <sighs> Flipping beautiful, isn't it? Three days into the gib, mate. I suppose this is a good thing why you uh, carry spares. Gonna use these bolts to replace the um, uh, battery terminals in the, my third battery, my other back of my car, um, to hold all my battery lugs and everything together because I've got a couple of things running off it, and then hopefully everything will just run off my second battery under the bonnet. Um, and we're just gonna have to plug in solar and hope that we get good days and have it plugged in for a long time if we're not driving the car to keep that battery topped. Otherwise, she's going to go flat real quick. So, all right, just swap this out. Of all the things I envisaged, I did not envisage a battery crapping itself. I've never, ever had a battery just crap itself like that on me in all my years of camping and doing stuff. Especially sure, I've. I've no, especially not one that's so new. I've had one, um, I've had stuff, well, like stuff gets old and the batteries fail, like that's fine. And everything on the van looked like it was performing well, like charge rates and everything was great for what we were using. So we were super happy. And we still will be happy. It's just a bit of a hiccup that we've just got to deal with right now. So. Batteries are heavy, hey. <laughs> Flipping flippin heck. Oh man. Hey, what? That's like eight kilos, if that. And that's, this is like flipping 50. Bit of an update on the battery so um, we drove all the way to the Injiminji community, we'll community where we were told there was Optus reception and we didn't know if there was well there was luckily fortunately um, and then I proceeded to call iTech world on the phone with them for about 25 minutes um, they're pretty insistent that the battery is in um, like safe mode because it hasn't been charged properly um, even though I've run a number of tests on it so well hello from the future um, I thought I might as just probably insert this clip here to let you know the outcome of the video rather than dragging it out over a few episodes um, so spoiler we do make it to the end of the gib but in what condition you'll have to wait to find out um, one thing though that I will share is this battery unfortunately definitely is cactus um, it's no good so um, we have got to a point where we are able to connect the caravan back to mains power 
So we whacked it back in the caravan and gave it a full charge and the battery was good for a few days and then we came to the van and it uh, showed as battery not connected on our battery management system. So whipped it out and um, the battery is no good. So we've pulled it out and I'm gonna be sending it back to iTech World. But as you can see, it uh, gets all sorts of weird voltages. So pretty much nothing at the moment. So it's a bit disappointing. Um, I've spoken to iTech World and they're willing to have it back and then pending them assessing that it is actually, yes, definitely a faulty battery, um, which is the case because it's been fully charged and still losing voltage. So clearly it's not in battery safe mode. Um, I'll either have the option to um, try and get them to send me a new one all the way up here um, in the north of Australia or um, we'll have to get a, another battery locally. Um, I think it'll just depend on time frames as to what we choose to do um, because by the time this gets sent all the way back to Perth and they do their testing and then potentially them send us another battery it could be quite a number of weeks so uh, I suppose it's just a shame it's a brand new battery um, we've had it for probably about two or three months um, but the beginning of this trip is really the first time we've solely relied on it so yeah it only it only worked for us for about oh, 10, 10 to 14 days um, before we started having those issues so anyway that's where the battery is at and uh, yeah we'll let you know into the future what we choose to do and if we um, are able to get a new battery off iTech World or if we have to go for something that we can pick up here a bit quicker but um, anyway yeah this battery is um, definitely dead and on its way to iTech World so the long and short of it is um, we have to wait to Kanadara to get a or send the battery off and then we got to wait to hear back from iTech World um, but yeah, I suppose the, the most disappointing thing is the road has been like super good. The Gib River Road, it's not like been in excessive corrugations. It's been super smooth. Everything up until the last 10 k's to Mount Barnett has um, been almost like highway, like bitumized. That's how good it's been because they've graded the whole lot and then there has been minimal traffic seeing that most of the Gibbs shut. So, um, you know, I, I can't say that it's because it's been real bad corrugation so far as mm. to the cause as to why the batteries failed so I should just leave this episode here we are here at Manning Gorge campground for at least two nights so we've got to try, got to try and do some cleaning and some maintenance on the van and maybe we'll do a walk we but have to do the Manning Gorge walk yes, we can't we not do it when we're here well we will but all those things are coming up in the next episode so Anyway, thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you in the next one where hopefully we will continue to give unscathed. <laughs> we'll Alright, see you then. Have a good one. Bye.